thousand people had been given this. And when I heard that, I went, okay, well now I know why, why IBM is calling these people guinea pigs. So they went into just a regular community to the regular community grocery store and, and, and were using it to, to treat people as basically lab rats for their technology. So again, this gets back to the exploding 20. It's not, <laughs> the fact that we have to ask the question, the fact that these kind of things are going on secretly, I think is the problem. That's, that's really what we're facing right now in 2004 is we really don't know where this is being tested and the people doing it are not really doing it responsibly. All right, now Texas Instruments, uh, remember you saw the whole tray of all the different uh, tags they have? Texas Instruments is openly promoting this use of RFID. Uh, this is an image showing a woman, uh, you know, seemingly not even knowing when she walks past that reader device, her little purse is beaming out, here I am and I'm Jane Q Shopper and I'm either a valuable shopper or maybe I'm, I'm a sort of low income shopper and you can treat me badly. Um, they specifically come out, come right out and say, you know, it's up to you how you want to treat your customers. You can identify them when they come in, and you can make a decision whether to treat them well or poorly. So um, now it's interesting since I've been publicizing this uh, this uh, this image from the Texas Instruments website, they pulled it. Um, they, they've removed this page. There are a number of companies that are actively promoting this, and we have really no way of knowing whether they're in our loyalty cards right now, our frequent shopper cards. Of course, I wouldn't be caught dead using one. Um, but that's a different issue. All right, um, Tesco in England. Now, I tell you this to tell you um, a little bit of good news. Here's the good news. As far as I know, our efforts have been extremely successful in the last year and a half to stop this technology dead in its tracks here in the United States on item level individual products. Now, in Germany, they're putting it on those four products that I mentioned. Tesco is um, one of the biggest retailers, or the biggest retailer in England. And they, this whole aisle that you see is all a reader device, all the way down the aisle. And they've put an RFID tag on each of their DVDs. It's visible. You can see it if you flip it over. You can tell that it's on there if you know what to look for. Um, it's very clear plastic. Um, I love the sign that they put up. They said, you know, we're, we're being really upfront and we're telling people that we're using the technology. No secrecy here. Tell me what you think of this sign. Here's the notice. Helping to make your shopping easier. We are trialing new technology to help improve availability of DVDs and games. To find out more, please pick up a leaflet from customer service. Every little helps, which is the way the British say every little bit helps. So do, do you feel informed? <laughs> when I went over and I got the pamphlet, it basically says, we're trying out this new technology and it's going to be really great. And it's going to ensure that you never run out of the products you want. Everything you need is going to be right there on the shelf, just where you want to find it. We're working together to make a better store. I was, I, this is notice. This is disclosure. I was horrified. So, um, but when you hear Tesco talk about it, I mean, they're up front with their consumers, and their, their customers all know this is happening, and they're all comfortable with it. All right. This is the reader portal uh, in place in the Tesco store when you walk in and out. Um, Tesco does have a loyalty card. From what I've been told, it does not have RFID in it. Uh, if anybody has one and would like to subject it to an x-ray if you find it otherwise, please let me know. Uh, what's interesting is those portals are now on the way into stores as well as out of stores, so they could be scanning you as you walk in. All right. So that was one of my adventures this last year was was uh, checking out the Metro store and uh, uncovering that scandal and uh, causing a lot of front page news and full hour long TV specials and everything else on the horrible scandal of RFID in, in, in Germany. So it gave them a big black eye in, in that store. So now the, um, the other thing was uh, another sort of scandal that I uncovered this past year was something called Frontline Expo. And what it is is it's a, uh, a trade show where the people who do the supply side stuff, those reader devices you saw, that's where they sell that. So they do all the barcode inventory control management for the people who have to comply with that Walmart mandate. And it looks like this. Um, it's a sort of medium-sized uh, conference. And you'll see you know, folks here from Philips and IBM and uh, ADT, the, uh, the, the people who do home security and other things. And uh, one of the things that I found when I was there was this smart shelf being trialed. And the smart shelf that you see here is essentially a metal shelf on the bottom. And you see how it kind of curves up. And on top they had a little plastic, you know, it looked like an upside down tray. So what it is is kind of a hollow shelf. If you see one of those, drop me an email. <laughs> <laughs> if you see one in a real store, I do not know of this being trialed in any real store, 
but they're definitely promoting it as uh, a possibility or something that they would like to be selling. You see above it says automated shelf level merchandise management. So this is literally getting to the point of putting those on individual products. Um, so you see when I flipped over the Kleenex box, there's a, one of those circular RFID tags on it. So the shelf is actually able to read that tag, the, the Kleenex box sitting on it. Uh, same thing with little swimmers diapers. You see the little circular tag on there? Now this obviously was for demo purposes. If you wanted to hide that, you could do a better job than that. They just literally just stuck them on and were testing out the shelf. Uh, another similar smart shelf was holding uh, pharmacy products. This is uh, Similac formula, a little tag on the bottom there. Uh, this is a Rite Aid product. Uh, I, be oh, I believe this was NyQuil. has another tag. It's circular. If you pulled it off, you could see the antenna running around on it. And this was another one that um, pharmaceuticals are a very hot application for RFID right now, drugs. Uh, they want to prevent counterfeiting. They want, they, they've got a whole host of plans with drugs. And this was a, a, a prototype. And so you open it up, and it looks just like a regular, you know, pack, blister pack of medication. But when you hold it up the right way to the light, you see that little indented rectangle? That's where the RFID tag is. It's actually inside of there between the layers of the cardboard. Now, again, are they actually doing this? To the best of my knowledge, they are not. The people at both of these shelves denied any active RFID tagging at any stores in the United States. So as far as I know, and believe me, I spend you know, 20, 30 hours a week reading everything I can get my hands on about this information, all the latest industry, you know, so a lot of really boring stuff. And I'll tell you, I do not know personally of any retailer in the United States that is admitting to openly using RFID. Now that's actually really good news because what it means is that if we find it, if you actually find it being done, then that's big news. And in fact, it's big news in sort of a scandalous way that they will have to either explain themselves or back away from it. And uh, let me get into some of our successes in the last year. By the way, let me, let me, let me put one caveat on there. There are seven, six or seven Walmart stores in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that are selling, uh, selling Hewlett-Packard products, like big printers, that do have RFID tags on the outside of the boxes. Now, um, I don't know about you, but I don't usually carry a big printer box in my back pocket, so the consumer privacy I implications of that are probably not so huge. Um, we did last November, about a year ago, um, issue a position statement. This was over 40 of the world's leading consumer privacy groups. Uh, we co-authored it. And that position statement, which we issued to industry across the board, said, we don't want to see any item level tagging. We don't want to see you putting any of these tags on individual items that we buy. What you do in the warehouse is your business. We're not going to argue with you about crates and pallets. But we are going to draw the line at putting these tags on items in our stores. And when I say our stores, the store is kind of a shared space. They like to think of it as their space, and they can treat us like rats in a cage and surveil us with cameras and do whatever they want. But I think the average consumer feels like when you go into a store, you still have some dignity, and you still have a right not to be tracked and trailed and stared at and photographed and other things because of their technology. So I think that's really going to be the battleground. And these uh, retailers and these manufacturers have complied with our request. Uh, we, we requested a moratorium on item level tagging a year ago, and they have complied with it. Uh, the only exception being those seven stores, those seven Walmart stores in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. Right. So again, these are prototypes, but it gives you a sense of where they're trying to go. Now, there's a company called Checkpoint Systems that I'm extremely concerned about. And what Checkpoint Systems does, they, they manufacture those anti-theft portals. Uh, there's actually two companies, Checkpoint and Sensormatic. Um, that are probably the main ones. And you can see when you walk through the next one, you walk through, look down at the bottom, and you'll probably see the company name on there. And Checkpoint um, had a display at this Frontline Solutions Conference. And from here, it looks like just some clothing labels, you know, not a, not a real big deal, you know, stuff you'd have on the supply side. And uh, you've got Abercrombie and Fitch, Carter's, Calvin Klein, and that black one up at the top says Old Navy. And then I saw this one. This is a Champion Athletic Works uh, product. It's made by Sarah Lee, you know, the same people who make Pi, also own Champion. And uh, it has a little sewn-in tag that actually says RFID. Well, when you look inside of it, kind of hard to see here. But um, yeah, in fact, you can't really see. What it has is a, a black circle and lots of circuitry running out of it that's kind of been sewn into it, sort of on that top portion. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not showing up very well there. Um, this is actually a remote trackable RFID tag. 
sewn directly into a garment, incorporated into a fabric label and sewn into a garment. Are they selling these? They deny it. 